what's that? Out in space, it's a station with a T-Rex face Firing lasers and playing games and killing all those herbivores Out beyond the atmosphere, he's collecting stuff and striking fear Come on board and grab a beer for gameplay fits and retro cheer T-Rex Space Station Hi guys, it's Ben here from T-Rex Space Station. How's everyone doing? And welcome back to another video. Firstly, before I get on to today's topic, I just want to say that I absolutely love Grand Theft Auto 3. This has always been my favorite Grand Theft Auto game. It's my favorite in the series, and I know that bigger, better, bolder, and more graphically exciting games have come out, but this is the one that is my favorite, the one that's the most memorable for me, the one that I come back to the most. I guess it's partly because it was the first one that I played and it was such an amazing experience finally seeing this game on the PS2 and seeing a series that I'd loved so much come into full 3D. But it's also about the world, it's somehow quieter, more meaningful, more peaceful. I love the rain effects, I love the radio stations and the music in this one, I love the missions, and I love the world and the maps. And yes, it is a smaller one than some of the more recent ones, but this is the one that I keep coming back to and that I really love. And I was reminded of how much I love this game by a really good video recently by DJ Slope's Games Room, looking back at the complete history of the Grand Theft Auto series. And it's absolutely fascinating learning about how these games came to be. If you guys haven't seen that video, I would strongly recommend it, and I'll post a link to that video in the description below. But Grand Theft Auto is an apt game to come onto because it actually ties into what I want to talk about today. So Dick Van Dyke, the famous Disney actor who was a star of the original Mary Poppins film all those years ago, is having a cameo appearance in the new Mary Poppins film, Mary Poppins Returns. And he's 91 years old now, and he's been quoted as making comments on violent video games and violent videos recently. There's a Guardian article which I'll post a link to in the description below which basically describes him as saying he thinks that children idolise these violent games and violent films as a, as a romantic way of life and he's no doubt that Walt Disney would have been horrified by the explicit depictions of blood, gore and killing in some of the contemporary productions created to entertain children and he says that Walt Disney would have spoken out about it. He thinks that these kind of films could incite violence in children and so we're back here again. Now GTA is a great example because when it came out there was hysteria about how violent it was, you had all these worried mothers phoning into talk shows and all this stuff that actually really went in favour of GTA and they used that media shitstorm as a way of marketing and popularising their series because actually a lot of that controversy was around even before the games came out. They towed a very fine line in terms of working up all of that hysteria to get them publicity and actually just about managed to avoid getting banned because it was obviously it was actually quite close to the bone in certain instances. So I think the first thing that I want to say about this is the fact that actually if you look back to some of those early Walt Disney films there are lots of things that by modern standards we would say are pretty immoral, pretty out of touch and downright intolerant. Um, you know, the first point of view is that there actually is a lot of gender stereotypes in, uh, in those early Walt Disney films. And the most obvious one that I would point out would be Uncle Remus in Song of the South. Uh, that film was pretty much banned, widely banned, and widely criticised for having negative stereotypes of a black slave who was portrayed as being overly jolly and all this other stuff. And it really didn't do a lot of work in terms of raising awareness. And so, what would modern audiences say about that? I don't think we should paint Walt Disney as being some kind of hero, because there were lots of things that were wrong about the films that he made, and lots of things that you could pick up on. Now, I'm not saying that I don't like early Disney stuff, I, you know, I do, but I'm not one to say that it's perfect by anyone's imagination. But we seem to be back here again, back here that people are linking video games and violent films with making violent people. Now, the, I think another thing to point out is the fact that Dick Van Dyke is 91, and I'm sorry to say, but he's just massively out of touch. The world isn't how it was when he was younger, and it's just a case of people who don't understand things become frightened and fearful of it, and basically a lot of the things you'll see is in the, in the modern media people don't seem to understand video games. Certainly people in the last two generations seem to be quite scared by it, quite alienated by it, and therefore use it as an easy scapegoat to point the finger at and say, well this must be why we've got a problem with our generation, this is where violence is coming from. And people who actually have spent time with it and grown up with it would not say that. Is there any good evidence that these things that they say are, are true? I think the answer to that is no. You'll see an article here in The Guardian that's linked um, that says that some psychological studies suggested that children displayed a more aggressive behaviour after being exposed to violence. But look, I, I really think that the answer is obviously in a common sense way, no. Video games and violent films can never be held responsible for violent behaviour. 
we're exposed to lots and lots of different things as we're growing up, as we're learning, but being exposed to them and learning about them does not mean that you definitely go on and do them or that you're more likely to do them because having a moral compass means that you have a moral compass. That's something that your parents teach you and that you learn as you grow older. Simply being exposed to something does not mean that you have to follow it blindly. Secondly, I think that learning a realistic opinion of the world, violence, sex and all, can be useful. I mean, is it always great to shelter people from learning about that? Now, I don't think that young kids should definitely be exposed to that stuff, don't get me wrong, but I think that having a balanced worldview is sometimes a good thing. And sometimes the old Walt Disney films were far too shiny, far too unrealistic, and really steered so strongly away from any of that stuff that they were a little bit sterile in some ways. Dick Van Dyke has said that children have asked him where are the films like those ones that you used to make, what's happened to those films, as though they find that the modern children's films are far too violent, and I really have to say I do not think that's the case. You know, there have been loads and loads of really touching, fantastic animated films for kids, things like Disney Pixar films, Madagascar, Up, those films aren't stuff full of violence, they're just sweet, lovely, moving stories. And, you know, maybe I could look at some of the ones that include violence and say that actually they're my favourites and I don't think that they're terrible or go too far. Things like Kung Fu Panda, you know, that is essentially a Kung Fu movie, but it's comical and it's done in such a way that it's not harmful and it's it's still nice and portrayed in that friendly, childlike way. I just have to say that I've grown up watching lots of violent cartoons, violent movies, played violent video games as I was underage. I think I played Grand Theft Auto when I was 16 or 15 and I've turned out absolutely fine. You know why? Because I've got a moral compass and I can tell right from wrong. And video games have got nothing to do with that moral compass. So I think that you really shouldn't just blame this and use this as a scapegoat because you're old and because you don't understand it. It's got nothing to do with films these days. There are plenty of kids' films out there that are innocent, that are lovely. Toy Story, for example, a great series. And they continue to be produced. And I don't, I don't think that you should just be saying that tarring everything with the same brush and saying things these days are too violent and kids don't want it and you're making them aggressive. Uh, no, I don't think that's true. I think that things have come a long way in many ways that the Walt Disney stuff hadn't. As I said, in terms of gender stereotypes and maybe a more realistic exploration of life and all of its meaning and all of its different aspects. So I'm just saddened to see another old person who doesn't really get it, another old person pointing the finger at modern media. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, mate, you're just, you're just past it and you really don't get it. And yeah, let's go play Grand Theft Auto because it's an amazing bloody game. <laughs> Take care, guys, and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.